Oh, hey guys. Um, I was going to go live tonight, but I decided against that because my husband was watching the football game and I live in a very tiny house and I couldn't get away from noise, so I didn't want that to bother anyone. But now he's taking a shower and I've got a few moments. I wanted to go over a video that I was listening to, I think it was about a week ago or so, of Katie's that that really it was very disturbing to me and I think it bothered a lot of people and I'm going to play that right now and just a, a small bit of it and um, you guys will know what I'm talking about And sorry, this isn't going to be a professional setup. You know me, I'm just cozy and do my thing. <laughs> you guys is chatting about like, it's really weird to me that you guys are sitting here chatting about things that are totally unrelated. And I'm telling you something really serious. And you guys are just like talking about things that are unrelated. I actually think I'm going to go. It's weird to like be opening up and all I see is you guys sitting there talking about yourselves so you guys are being really rude like it's weird I I, I was like gonna turn chat off like I, I honestly can't imagine like sitting here and having someone open up to you about the hardest day of their lives and you're sitting there talking to strangers and you're literally just like not even listening and you're just talking about yourself. It's coming. And now the chat is focusing on Susan and Debbie. It's... So... I don't even know if you guys were listening. Okay. So she actually ended that live because she was upset because she was talking about her the day that her son originally had been admitted to the hospital because he almost died. I'm sorry, this hair is bugging me. So... She was telling everyone that she was having a terrible day and didn't understand why until one of her friends actually messaged her on Facebook and told her, you know, oh, I remember this day, blah, blah, blah. And so she's like, yeah, that's why I've been feeling like this all day. And I can take these off. <laughs> so, um, the friend reminded her what day it was. So she remembered, you know, that was the day her son went into the hospital. Which, yes, I mean, that's traumatizing, you know. I have PTSD for my own son um, being terminally ill. And um, I just don't get how or why she went after her pain members, have you, for a woman, actually, that spoke up and said she had lost her daughter. 
sorry, my screen went off, um, that she had lost her daughter, like, a week before that, and Katie got pissed off, like, she legitly got pissed off, and said that it was what word that I don't even remember what word she used that it was just I mean basically the audacity of her members giving this other woman attention because she had lost her child and the focus should have been on her she was trying to tell everyone why she was having this rough day and what had happened and she's told everyone all this before by the way this wasn't the first time we've heard this story and I can tell you from a mother's perspective of almost losing a child and not because of emergency surgery or what have you um, he was diagnosed terminally ill and I'm going to give you my story on that. So, my son was two years old. Um, for about four or five days, he was acting kind of flu-like. I had taken him to the doctors. They said it was the flu. Give him Tylenol. Um, by the fourth day, he was holding his diaper when he... Um, urinated and cried so I knew he probably had you know a urinary tract infection bladder infection it was late at night when this started happening so I took him to the hospital and um, the hospital said he had a urinary, urinary tract infection so they gave him an antibiotic for that sent us home the next day it was it, he was acting okay but by nighttime he was vomiting and it had seemed just unusual and it was right after I gave him the medication for his urinary tract infection and so I can remember um, giving him a bath and in the morning I was gonna make him a doctor's appointment made him a doctor's appointment they couldn't get him into the next day um, I felt confident enough that, you know, he'd be okay. It was the flu. It was, it's running its course. And I went to work. He was home with his dad. And I can remember his dad come and picked me up from work. And I had worked inside the mall. And I, I got in the car, kissed my son, and... I thought his color looked off to me, so I asked his father, you know, does he, his color look off to you? And he's like, yeah, I thought so too. I was like, maybe it's just the lights, you know, these outside lights. So we get home, and I, getting him ready for bed, was giving him his bath, and he just did not look right. He looked yellow to me at this point like it came on quick too he looked yellow to me and I just got him dressed and I went right to the hospital and when oops sorry about my phone so we checked him in and everything and they took us right back I literally was in the room not even one minute and I had probably 10 professionals in that room and a doctor telling me your son is very ill and they I literally wasn't in that hospital five minutes and um, we were upstairs we were already getting a room and they did all kinds of blood work and um, 
they immediately knew that he needed a blood transfusion. Sorry, my screen keeps timing out. I don't know what's going on. Um, so, they told me that his blood work indicated that um, there was something seriously wrong. The director was coming in to speak to us. Um, they needed to give him this transfusion and they needed to do it very slowly basically if he got it too quickly that would kill him um, he had well let me run back to the doctor the doctor the director pulled us into his office and explained to me that um, he was 99.9% .9 sure that my son had leukemia and anytime you hear cancer, it's terrifying. Terrifying. So, he kind of went on to say, after my heart went, you know, from here to here, um, he continued talking. I couldn't tell you what he was saying. The only next thing I remember him saying is, nowadays leukemia is very curable in children. And I just looked at him like, you know, whatever you need to do, please do it, save my son. And, you know, I went from here to here to back here thinking, you know, he's going to be okay. And I can remember that doctor telling me, we'll just be thankful that it's not aplastic anemia, idiopathic anemia, you know, he goes, because those, there would be no hope if he had that. But he was 99.9% .9 sure he had leukemia. Um, I believe the next day they did a bone marrow aspirate. This is where they, um, they punctured him. I think hip side and um, took a piece of bone marrow out and that test came back that um, he had aplastic anemia severe aplastic anemia his body was his bone marrow body, he wasn't making any more than a few white cells they told me like that's all he was making I mean so I went from here, you know, back down. I I can tell you our initial night in that hospital when he was getting that transfusion. They told me that they didn't expect him to make it. And um, that was crushing. When you hear that, your child possibly isn't going to make it that's crushing you already you already start mourning for your child because you know they're going to die and um, I never want to feel that feeling again never it's the worst feeling in the world you know he didn't die thank God he didn't he made it um, I was told with the diagnosis of aplastic anemia, like we sat at that hospital for an entire week, being told there was really nothing they could do, you know, and, um, I mean, I'm a very shy person, but I'll tell you what, I literally dropped to my knees and hung on to the doctor and begged him not to let my child die. I mean, I, I literally begged. But um, thankfully, there was a doctor in Cincinnati who had, um, he was a 
a child oncologist that um, stopped treating cancer to specialize in aplastic anemia. And at this time, they had the hospitals had just started networking, which was a good thing because my son wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for that doctor and others. So um, they immediately had us, we got to drive him up there to Children's Hospital in Cincinnati. And um, that was where all our hope laid because nobody else knew what to do for him. It was so rare at this time, like he was literally the only doctor that was specializing in it. And we got extremely lucky, extremely lucky. So my son had tons of transmus transfusions, blood, platelets. He was bedridden because um, the more you move around, the more your body uses your platelets. <laughs> You know, and that's something they only give, like, I think every four days or once a week. It's hard for me to remember now. But, um, and they try not to give transfusions frequently, you know, because the more you got, the more risk there is for your body to re reject a transfusion. Once that happens, it can either kill you or you're going to die because you can never get another transfusion once that happens. Your body will reject them, kill you. So um, that's why they don't like to get transfusions unless completely necessary. Um, so yeah, I lived in the hospital for basically three months next to my son. His treatment actually was a experimental treatment. He was the 11th child to get this treatment. And I was told um, four had passed away and six had survived, still under treatment. So I got very lucky. My son was the 11th one on this experimental treatment, which at the time he got an IV dose of ATG. And he was started on oral cyclosporin. And um, cyclosporin is the same medication they give people with transplants. So your body doesn't reject um, your transplant. I'm sure there's other medications too, but it's a uh, immunosuppressant. So that was the protocol for him. And luckily after the first week, we started seeing results. His counts started going up because in theory at the time, um, in theory at the time they thought like his own T cells were attacking his bone marrow like it was foreign. So that was the whole reason behind the cyclosporin and hoping that treatment would work. And it it did work for him. Thank God it worked. Because there would have been nothing else to do but um bone marrow transplant. Which everyone that was tested was not a match. Um in our family anyway so we were our only option was that treatment plan to work and it did um, he was severely I mean compromised like any anything could have killed him anything like a cold could have killed him you know and we were sent home on that medication and it was very scary very very scary that kid's tough though but my whole point in that you know I choked up telling the story but in no way do I sit here today and feel that 
gut wrenching feeling that my son almost died. Like, yes, I get choked up. I didn't expect to. But it's been a long time since I told this story. But I am so grateful. So grateful that he's here. I I mean, I can understand, like I said, like I got choked up telling a story because of the feelings that come with it, you know? But my God, I am so grateful, so grateful that my son is alive and he made it. I couldn't imagine being so freaking selfish to one of you telling me that you lost a child that I'd be pissed off because you weren't listening to me or my story or what I went through or it's mind blowing it is mind blowing how someone else has how she, she has no empathy for anyone none it seems like it's like, look at me. I'm what's important. I don't care about you right now. It's me I'm talking about. I'm important. Who the? Who gets by in life being like that? I don't get it. And I don't think I recorded any of this. I did. Okay. It's <laughs> like, man, I don't want to have to tell that story again. I probably wouldn't have. <laughs> we would probably have talked about something else. But I just want that woman to know if she happens to come across my video. I am so sorry about your daughter. I am so sorry you were treated like that in her chat. There are people. The majority of the human population, I just want you to know, doesn't feel like she does. Talk about your daughter. Tell people about her. Because the majority of the human species will care. Will care to listen to you will want you to tell your story I mean I know I would I would love to hear about your daughter I'm just I'm sorry you were treated that way you know that breaks my heart more for you than having to sit here and tell my own story it's heartbreaking that somebody treats other people that way and maybe maybe that one video was a huge wake up call to a lot of people of who Katie really is because that is who she is when she acts like she cares that's exactly what she's doing she's She's acting. And, um, that's why we're all here. That's why I'm sitting here right now telling you my story. That's why there's 20 other channels out there telling you theirs. I just don't get it. I just don't. And I'm sorry for crying. These tears weren't for me. <laughs> they were for someone else who got treated like crap. I wanted to make this video a week ago. But, um, I knew I would do this. I knew I'd break down. Didn't want to. And I didn't think I would tonight. But, um, tears aren't for me, actually. I did good talking about my story. So, if, um, any of you have lost a child 
or have come close to losing a child, talk about your child. Tell us about your child. I know I'll listen. I'll care. Because your your feelings mean something. Your child means something. You know, that that is a part of healing. For that woman to talk about her daughter, that's a part of healing for her. The hardest thing for a mother when they lose a child is when people hush or hush them or don't talk about it or are scared to bring up to, just to bring it up that's the one important thing I want to tell people through all this is um, if you ever have a close friend that does lose a child Don't be afraid to bring it up because that hurts more than anything is when people are afraid to bring it up or bring the child up because the, the one thing that hurts a mom, mother most is when um, people forget and when you don't talk about it because you're scared, because you don't want to bring it up, because you don't want to upset the mom sure you know mother's gonna cry because they lost their child but it hurts when people forget just remember that don't be afraid to talk to your friend don't be afraid to say hey, how you feeling today because you're scared to even ask because you don't want to bring the memory up I not even tell you that memories in her brain 24 7 a day and when people are scared to talk about it that's what hurts it's truly I guess that's all I'm gonna say about that I just want you guys to re know that because um I've had a sister who lost her baby and I had my best friend that lost a baby and um that's what I learned from them it's just don't forget don't forget my child you know don't be scared to talk about it and when Katie did that I wanted to reach through the freaking computer and choke her myself because um that was hushing the mom you know saying that you don't matter your daughter didn't matter and I can imagine that woman probably cried herself to sleep that night I know I would have I don't know I think some people need to stop being so selfish and just hear people alrighty I think I'm going to end this here. This video turned into something I didn't even expect it to. I wanted to talk about that video and it ended up, I guess, talking about what mattered anyway. That's what mattered. If anything can come out of it, you know, that advice to you, knowingly, like, I know that it's important. So, I'm glad you guys are listening to me babble. Uh, my first um, video that I did showing my face, I had to be crying in, right? But <laughs> thanks for being here and thanks for listening, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs>